A social media addict wakes up to his alarm in the morning and proceeds to mindlessly scroll on his phone. He is so hopelessly addicted that it's the first thing he does when he wakes up. He sits scrolling for half an hour, not even moving from his bed. When he does eventually get up, he has garbage for breakfast without even looking away from his phone. The consistent consumption of short format videos has caused him to be completely emotionless. When a funny video comes on, he doesn't even laugh. He is so addicted to his phone that he doesn't even live in the real world. He doesn't look up when walking his dog or going outside. He is consumed completely by his phone. He wants to live a life full of purpose and meaning, but he can't seem to stop scrolling. He is completely unpresent in the world around him, and he doesn't know how to escape the endless black hole that is social media. The relationships with those around him are almost non-existent, as he is so fixated on his phone. To finish off the day, just as he started, he goes on his phone. He feels unmotivated and without purpose, and he hasn't been the person he wanted to be throughout the day. But yet tomorrow he'll probably do the same thing and repeat the same processes. Don't be the social media addict. Don't spend every hour of every day on your phone because you will regret it throughout your life. Hello and welcome to our fourth video for this year. Today we're going to be talking about the dangers of social media, particularly the negative effects it can have on your life and some of the things you can do to counteract that. Yeah, so we're just going to be talking about how it reduces your attention span um, and really impacts the relationship you have with the people around you, as well as um, how it can be uh, catastrophic to your dopamine system. Yeah, exactly. All right, we'll get started. Social media is probably one of the worst addictions in our modern day society. And this is because almost everywhere you look, people are on their phones, texting their friends, uh, liking a post on Instagram or sending a photo on Snapchat. And I find this quite a sad reality. We are spending most of our lives on our phones instead of in real life. And there are huge impacts on this as well. So one of them is attention span. Our attention span is greatly reduced by the use of social media. Since we are constantly scrolling and consuming different stories and snaps and all these things or short videos, our mind is trained to not focus on things for long periods of time because we don't have to. That's why taking a break from social media and really focusing on actually improving yourself, like reading books, meditating, um, talking to people rather than texting them. These aspects of life are so much more important than social media. A little bit of use of social media is okay, but when we start relying on social media and using our phone a hundred times a day just to t check what our friends told us or what the next Instagram story is like or whatever, right? It becomes a bad addiction and this is not good for our lives. There are so many better things to do than uh, go on social media. You can read a book and the reason why a lot of people can't read books anymore is because their attention span is so greatly reduced from the use of social media. Or you could um, talk to people about what you think or just be bored. That's, that's quite a, another point. Um, being bored is probably, in a lot of circumstances, better than going on social media. Because when you're bored, you're actually thinking of, um, you're gaining motivation to do things that are productive and you're thinking of ways to be better and to return to the instant gratification of social media is to give up that surge of motivation that you're gaining from being bored. Uh, social media is instant gratification. You're getting dopamine response from no, for no reason, right? Basically no reason. And that's why it's not productive. Whereas delayed gratification, like reading a book or focusing on a skill, you feel a lot better in the long run because you've worked towards your end goal and it's a lot more fulfilling. So social media sort of encourages uh, instant gratification and it's a really, really addictive form. And the thing about instant gratification is that it depletes your dopamine storage in your brain. So when you go on social media you, and you get instant gratification from it, your dopamine releases, right? 
then you've got less dopamine to run on for the rest of your day. And when you keep on going on social media, your dopamine supplies are always releasing, right? So your your dopamine is not going to be nearly, your dopamine level, base level, is not going to be nearly as high as it would be as if you were engaging in delayed gratification activities. So if you were engaging in reading a book, for example, you're not instantly getting a spike of dopamine, but your baseline is a lot higher. So you'll be in a generally better mood for a lot longer period of time. And this, in the long run, is much more worth it because when you get a dopamine spike, it goes down to below baseline and you're going to feel a lot worse afterwards. So that's basically how it can really affect your dopamine system, especially if you're checking it like a hundred times a day. And that is why it is so addictive because you're getting dopamine releases when you're on social media. So yeah, I often say like, People want to text a lot of the time. Most of the time, you can just call someone. People don't call anymore. When you call someone, you don't need to... You don't... Like, Snapchat is so dumb. Like, you don't need to talk... Most people don't even talk to half the people they have in Snapchat. Give some. Give your number to the people you actually talk to and call them if you want to make plans or you do something. There's no reason to waste time on social media to contact your friends or your family. It's just going to end up distracting you and you're going to end up wasting a lot and a lot of time not being uh, the person you want to be, not building up to the man you want to become or the woman you want to become. Um, and that's why it is so detrimental to you. Like, it's, it's such a bad addiction and it's not shone light upon our generation. Okay, so to get started, the first thing I'm going to talk about is a study that was released by the Public Health Society in 2017. And this study covered 1,500 people and it looked at the effects of five different social media apps. These included the most common ones, so like YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat. And when they looked at the results of these five apps, it was targeted specifically at the effects on mental health. They found that four of these apps had detrimental effects on mental health. No surprise, Instagram was the number one in terms of the worst effects on your mental health. Surprisingly, YouTube was the only one that was found to have some positive impacts on your mental health. So why, why was Instagram found to be the most detrimental on your mental health? There's quite a few reasons to, or for this, but the first one comes down to our actual brain itself, um, our, our functioning. So if you look at back in the day, humans, what were we designed for? We were hunters, we were gatherers. Our brain was run to be on high alert at all times. But more importantly, what we were designed to do, and our brains are very good at this, is we're very observing of our environment and this on a subconscious level. Our brains are designed to know exactly where we fit on the social hierarchy. And this is because back in the day, if you were not in the middle of the social hierarchy, if you fall off to the bottom tiers, you're often at risk of dying from disease, from you know, being poor, Going even further back in time, you risk not being part of the tribe, getting getting kicked out, becoming an outcast, and getting eaten. So that's why this function serves, and and it was really crucial back then. So this part of the brain that analyzes where we are in the social, social hierarchy still exists today. We're still the same humans. So if we look at Instagram. Here's where it's really detrimental. Our brain, normally before the times of Instagram. If you're a student, you'd go to school and you would just see those 30 kids in your class, maybe 200 kids in your year, and most people would fall roughly on that average tier. There would be a few people, maybe the cool kids at the top, a few people who weren't as cool at the bottom, but it was quite easy to know where you stood. Nowadays with Instagram, that circle of people has grown to the whole world. Instead of being a few hundred, it's now potentially a few billion. So when we're scrolling on our feed, when we're seeing those popular posts, they're popular because we're seeing the extreme, the best looking people, the strongest bodybuilders, the most beautiful models. And we see a lot of this because these are the things that gets views and gets clicks and therefore gets brought up to the front of our page. And again, this happens on a subconscious level. Our brain's looking at these images of these people who are succeeding and our brain starts comparing us to them. And if we're constantly seeing this, Slowly, our brain thinks we're lower down in the social hierarchy than we actually are. And what does this lead to? It leads to feelings like anxiety, depression, um, and a whole host more. 
If you look at Instagram on a more surface level, I'm going to talk about a personal story I've had, and maybe it's a story that some of you viewers have had yourselves. I remember back in the day when I first got Instagram, I was maybe 14, 15, and you know, you make your first few posts, and one of the first things you look at is your likes and your comments. Who's liking my post, who's commenting my post. And when you first start off, it's, it's a rather innocent thing, you know, but if you're anything like me, I'm quite a critical person, you start putting a lot and a lot of emphasis on the number of likes your post is getting. And this can get to the point, you might make a post, and all of a sudden it's not getting as many likes as one of your previous posts. There shouldn't be any reason for concern, but for me especially, this would send my brain to almost a sort of overdrive panic state, where I think, what have I done wrong? Um, clearly I'm a lesser person than I was when I made this last post. I, I, I'm a failure in some respect. And this is the power of what the power of one app has done to my mental health. And if it's done this to me, I'm sure there's many people who are watching this video who've had a similar experience. So what's the solution for this? Culling the followers, the people that don't matter on Instagram, the amount of time you spend on Instagram, and the third point is taking a general dopamine detox of technology to help alleviate those symptoms of you know, that short attention span that helps drive you back onto the app in the first place. Social media is only the enemy if we let it be. By understanding the effects of these apps, together we can all strive to get out and become more present in society and find a healthier balance going forward. Okay, so I hope you can take something out of this video. I hope you can learn that maybe spending a little bit less time on social media can be a lot more beneficial for your life and uh, start spending your time in better ways, you know, uh, increasing your productivity and the person you want to be and the things you want to take out of life. Yeah, 100%. I could not agree more. But just remember, everyone, the key is not necessarily um, getting, deleting Instagram, getting rid of it entirely, but it's about finding that balance for you and for yourself to make sure it's not mentally affecting you too much. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. We always love your feedback. And yeah, thanks, guys.